Welcome to the Nonprofit Show. We are so glad you're here for another episode and another day of the Nonprofit Power Week with Fundraising Academy at National University. We have back with us today, Tony Bell, where he serves as the Senior Director of the National University Academy's Relationship Center. And Tony is back with us to continue the conversation that we started yesterday of the cause selling model and in particular phase two, and we're moving into steps three and four today. So, so much to talk about with you, Tony, and really glad to have you back here you. as we refer to it as the hot seat. Julia Patrick is also here today, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy, and I'm Jarrett Ransom, your nonprofit nerd and CEO of the Raven Group, honored to serve alongside Julia day in, day out to get super nerdy with our guest across the globe as we dive into everything that has to deal with nonprofits. And hey, we wouldn't be where we are, 830 plus, plus, plus episodes. Thank you to our generous and loyal supporting sponsors. So again, Fundraising Academy at National University, again, where Tony's joining us from. Also, Bloomerang, your part-time controller, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Nerd, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. These companies are also with us day in and day out. Their mission, I like to say, is your mission because they want to help you do more good uh, for those individuals and communities that you serve. So do us a favor. Do them a favor, but I promise it's going to be, you know, you that's benefiting here. Definitely check them out because they're they're just uh, stellar companies. And hey, if you missed any of those 830 plus plus episodes, don't worry. You can find them. Go ahead, take out your smartphone now. You can scan the QR, download the app, and in just a couple of hours after today's conversation that we're having live with Tony, today's recording will be posted Yesterday's already there. So if you missed yesterday's, go ahead and listen to that. We're also on the podcast um, platforms as well as broadcast. So anywhere you choose to consume your entertainment, bet your bottom dollar, we're there. <laughs> I love it. Hey, yeah. Tony uh, Bell, Na Senior Director, National University Academy's Relationship Center. Thank you so much for joining us. And really, I know you've walked this path with so many people in the educational sector, but you also have been in the fundraising um, and the nonprofit space. And so you bring to us the academic knowledge and leadership and role, but you've also been on the other side of that desk. And so that's what I love about this, this knowledge that you bring uh, to us. Briefly re-engage us with the eight step cause selling cycle before we, we navigate into phase two. Sure. So the uh, the cost selling cycle, as folks can see from this great diagram, it's uh, three phases, an eight step cycle, uh, all the way from prospecting where you're kind of brainstorming that list of potential investors to support your cause all the way to you've secured the gift. And now how do we steward that relationship? Uh, make sure the donor what is appreciated, knowledgeable about how the guest is, I mean, the guest, the gift is being invested and then queuing them up for the next gift. So, so really everything from the very beginning of, of finding out who you should be having relationships with to support your cause to maintaining those, those relationships. So as you can see, they're the prospecting, the pre-approach, the approach, the needs discovery, which we're going to talk about today, which we often consider the heart of the cause selling cycle. Okay. Okay. Uh, so it's, um, it's, it's really easy to follow for folks that have been in the nonprofit sector for a little while. You will find that if you dive into this, you have organically you just naturally been doing a lot of this, but this really helps this cycle really helps us kind of formalize the process uh, to really put it in in what I would consider a trackable process. Uh, and, and your teams can get together in weekly huddles and say, where are we with our donors? And you could say, I have 10 donors in the pre-approach phase. I have five donors in the presentation phase. This week I'm meeting with four donors on step seven, the ask. So it really is a, a great way to kind of track the activity and progress 
uh, of your development team also. Yeah, yeah. I love Tony, that. I mentioned something on who knows what episode, but I was at lunch with a board member many moons ago and he said, well, I better let you go. I know you got to get back to dialing for dollars. Uh, I really wish I had this diagram then to say, let me educate you on this lifesaver that we referred to yesterday. Okay. You know, it's not dialing for dollars. It is really genuinely a donor centric approach, right? With the donor first and foremost, I love that you said the heart of the cycle and I can't wait to dive into that one. But I just really feel having this strategy, being able to say X amount in this uh, step, X amount in this yeah. step or phase, depending right. on how you divvy up your moves mm -hmm. management is a huge education model for the rest of the team, your board members, volunteers, right? Like so many others. And, and the other thing that we talk about with, with the cycle is that, you know, it really is all about relationships and not every relationship is the same, obviously, and not every relationship is formed in the same manner. So there are ways to on ramp a potential donor or investor in any of these steps. Okay. So we, we mentioned briefly, you know, in, in the green room, if you're a community that is, is heavy on, on special events and galas, which here in South Florida happens in the fall, uh, you may meet someone at the gala, instantly build a connection with them, and now you're you're ready to jump right into, you know, step four with that individual. Now you're ready to just set up the meeting and have the conversation that needs discovery conversation. So just keeping in mind that, uh, you know, you can go all the way from one to eight, but you may have relationships and and donors where you're going to onboard them, you know, starting at step four. Yeah, I love I love that you clarified that because I think that makes. A, a difference for all of us um, trying to figure out where we are, where our portfolio is, and then of course those individuals. So let's talk about this. We've moved into phase two and we're going to be talking about step three, mm -hmm. approaching the prospective donor. What does that look like to you? Yeah, so, so the approach is really all about making the right first impression. And so for for folks that want to dive deeper into this curriculum, you know, the things that we, we talk about there are learning ways to positively influence your individual impression, uh, discover ways to capture, capture the interest of prospects, and find out how to leave the right first impression, you know, at your next event. So this is the, this is the type of information uh, that folks get from the curriculum around approach. It really is all about that first impression. Uh, and I am referring to notes today. I want, fo want folks to know that because whenever I'm very specific about the curriculum, I want to, you know, I want to respect the integrity of the curriculum and hey. and not. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, I just held up my book. Um, yeah, my textbook. Because but we talk it is about curriculum. Yeah, it is. It is. It, it's a really intense, you know, intense, thorough. Uh, a curriculum. And so we, also when we talk about approach, we talk about the different types of approaches in the curriculum. So there's the relevant project approach. Uh, and that, you know, that approach shows your prospect that you came prepared and know what specific areas are closest to their heart. Because you've learned some of that in your pre-approach and some of the some of the data mining that you've done and the fact gathering that you've done uh, prior to the approach, you've learned some of these passion places and passion points for the potential investor. So it's, you know, relevant project approach, the impact approach for those individuals that I want to hear about the impact. How many people are you serving? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what are the real outcomes of, of your work? The curiosity approach, you know, have you ever imagined, Julia, what it might be like to be homeless? To, to not, you know, to not have the, the security of a roof over your head. Yeah. So, you know, so that those different types of approaches. So so we really dive into the complement approach. I mean, there, there are just many different ways uh, that you can approach a potential donor or investor for your organization. And that's what this step dives into. I really appreciate that. I, and I know that we've talked about, you know, segmenting our donors and other conversations that we've had here on the show. You know, but really honing into what is it, even, you know, as you said, uh, Tony, in your example, maybe the donor comes to the gala, we can jump now to step three or step four, depending on where we are now in that relationship, but we can hone back in to where that donor gave, 
Like when did they raise their paddle, right? When did mm -hmm. they do an auction bid or whatever? Like what was the thing that motivated them? And that in and of itself, right? Like gives us more data. And, and who were the other people that they were engaged with at the gala? Who did they speak to? Who were they sitting with? Were they sitting with someone that's already a don't? You know, so yeah. to your point, Jarrett, there are so many cues uh, that we can pick up on uh, in that particular scenario. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I think that's really smart. And I'll tell you, I think that this is a, a clarion call to all of those folks in our sector who go to events and act like they're not working, you know? Mm -hmm. That maybe they're chatting with people from their own team or they're not working the room. They're not going out and doing this exact step. And it makes me crazy. Well, um, that's where this, this step can really help in a lot of that, because your event planning, when you're planning for an event, part of that event planning should be cultivation mm -hmm. and, and stewardship. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, so folks that have these large galas really should, you know, dive into this content in, in step three and really have that kind of pre-event conversation. Who's going to be there? Who's mm -hmm. going to go in and have this connection with this individual? <laughs> yeah. Looking at really taking a, a look at your guest list and, mm -hmm. and, and, yeah. And I think that's a folks. wonderful opportunity to engage, you know, senior leadership as well as the board members to say, here's the five people on your list. Here's their table. Yes. Right. I want you to greet them, thank them for being here, ask them if they have any questions. Yeah. Um, and really, like you said, you know, really dividing up that guest list of who are the people that we do need to cultivate. Right. Mm -hmm. And continue mm -hmm. to steward both. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it. I mean, it's a it's a shock. I'm on the rubber chicken circuit. I mean, Jared, you are because I see you at these city events wearing the same color dresses, of course. Unfortunately, of course. most often, uh, of yeah, that we just show up looking like the Bobsy twins. But uh, so it, it really it really is it really is just all about yeah. making a first impression and all of the things that come along with making a first impression. And in today's landscape we make first impressions in many different ways. Mm -hmm. So our connectivity to individuals is different and, and varied uh, in ways it was never varied before. So, uh, so making a first impression, you may in fact connect with someone for the very first time on Zoom. So how are you minimizing distractions? What is the individual seeing behind you? Mm -hmm. If you are uh, one of the individuals that leads into having a bookshelf picture behind you, be mindful of the titles of the books. I mean, really think about uh, you know, your, your first impression. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of great content around that, questions to ask, ways to prepare yourself, uh, and things to think about mm -hmm. uh, when you are thinking about your approach and that first impression. I love it. I love that you um, kind of recentered us because now I want to ask you to really delve into need discovery. And and you mentioned this in, in the um, green room chatter that in so many ways, this is like the heart of the whole concept. So talk to us about that, Tony. Yeah, so need discovery, you're, you're right, Julia. It is the heart of the cause selling cycle. And the reason why it's the heart of the cause selling cycle is because this is when you are listening. This is the part you are done. I mean, you're asking questions but you are really listening. The need discovery part of the cost selling cycle is where you and the donor, potential investor in your organization are going to come to consensus on their readiness to commit to your organization, on their passion to connect to your organization, that your ethics are aligned, that your organizational ethics and the ethics of your potential donor are aligned. You are learning so much in need discovery <laughs> about this individual. And it's critical. I mean, we'll, we'll talk about the presentation in a moment, but this is critical, critical data as you prepare to move forward or not wow. with this potential 
you know, donor or investor. That's mm -hmm. really what it's all about. It's, you know, it, 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 it's that learning about each other. It's, it's that deepening their understanding of the organization and the impact that they can have on the work, uh, you know, that your organization is, is doing. Mm -hmm. So totally it's a lot about... A lot about questioning techniques and listening techniques. Sorry, Jared, I wasn't a good listener there. Go ahead. <laughs> good example. Now, I I have a total curveball question, Tony. Um, during the knee discovery, might you find out that the two of you, or you know, the person within fundraising and the, the person you're soliciting, are just not a good match? Like something's just not vibing. Um, it, is this an opportunity to introduce someone else from the team to maybe, you know, chauffeur that that cultivation yeah. along? Total curveball, but I'm just curious. No, no, I, no, I, I totally agree with you. And, you know, and, and often it depends on the organization, the individual, right? But a lot of times we do talk about the power of two in yeah. some of these conversations, right? Mm -hmm. To bring a board member, or, you know, if they were a referral, then, you know, bringing the individual that, that referred them. Uh, but Jared, I think it's a really smart question. If if the if the development professional and the potential donor, for whatever reason, like you're saying, just aren't vibing, mm -hmm. I think that you can still uh, you can still get enough information out of that needs discovery conversation to find out if you want to move the relationship forward. Meaning, are they still a good fit for the organization? Is the organization you know does everything fit? And if yeah. so, then, because we're not asking, we're not making right. an ask right? In, in our first meeting during our needs discovery, right? It really is inquiring minds want to know, right? It's all about yeah. questioning and, and more listening. Information, more, more information. More information, yeah. So uh, so I, I think it, so again, we're not vibing, but but I, you know, I'm committed to, to, to realizing whether or not this individual is a good fit for the organization. If we're a good fit for this individual, then, yeah. then once I have all of that information, I can go back to the office, huddle with my team and say, total transparency. We didn't really have the kind of energy and vibe that I was, I was hoping we would have, but this person is poised to make a gift to our organization and is passionate about the work that we do. Yeah. Let me share with you, you know, my takeaways on this individual and then let's see you know, who on our team, yeah. you know, might be a better fit. And then you can, you know, do an introduction and kind of hand over the relationship. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. And I, and I also, you know, want to drive home that this need discovery, right? Like you're capturing all this information, you're putting it in the database that we talked about even yeah. yesterday, yeah. right? Yeah. So these are nuggets of critical information that should be transferred, you know, over time, over years, through the development department, um, as long as that donor, right, is engaged. So really looking at that. But I appreciate you answering my curveball question because for some reason that popped up in my head. <laughs> well, I understand why. It's real. It's very real, Jared. It is so real. I'm, I'm yeah. glad, that it, uh, glad that it popped up in your mind. Uh, yeah. And one of the things folks will, and I know we're going to talk about the portal and how folks can have access to the, mm -hmm. the curriculum. But one of the things that we've we've done when we developed the online portal was we developed these donor quick connect questions, mm -hmm. uh, which are part, which are part of the need discovery step. So we have personal questions like what, you know, what are you most passionate about and why? So just questions to help get the conversation going. Uh, philanthropic centered questions like what was the most rewarding experience you've ever had as a donor? I love so that different question. categories, just different questions to help folks just kind of get the conversation going. They maybe cause specific questions like, what is it about our mission that speaks to you and why at this moment in time in particular? So really, really great, great questions uh, that folks can use every day. <laughs> yeah, right. I, and I like that you just said that. It, these are the questions that we should be using every day that um, it really just helps us to understand and clarify, you know, what the path that we're all on, if it's the right path. You know, right. so many organizations have a lot of different programming and, yeah. and one whole piece of an organization spirit may not speak to a donor, but something else could become absolutely, you know, the, the center part of their philanthropic life. For sure. And, yeah. and this is where you find that out. You find out some of it in your pre-approach, you know, and, uh, but, 
and your approach, but the need discovery when you're actually in, in front of the individual, again, whether that be face-to-face -face in real life or via Zoom, uh, the questioning, and then your ability to listen mm -hmm. is really, really important. Yeah, yeah. It, fascinating, fascinating. Um, before we move on, and again, Jarrett's like, encourage me, the curveball thing, get your mitt, catcher's mitt up. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> um, does it ever seem like you get to this point and then you're like, wow, I need to go back. I've, I've met with this, this poten potential donor and I need to go back and, and rethink my approach and maybe um, kind of reinvest in how I'm going to move forward. Or, or do you feel like maybe we we shouldn't have any surprises at this point? Well, no, you may ve you may walk away from it, and it's happened to me. And Julia, thank you for mentioning. I mean, I I spent at least twenty years yeah. actively fundraising, yeah. uh, and and there was definitely more than one occasion when I left that initial needs discovery conversation having kind of more questions. Once I went back and kind of reflected. Mm -hmm. uh, on, on the experience and, and having more more questions and not feeling like I was really settled and in a good place to move forward to the next step. So okay. your your need discovery, it may be three conversations, it may be okay. four conversations, it may be one conversation. Okay. Uh, so so there there are definitely those times where you walk away and, and you think, hmm, we vibed, like we hit it off. But there, something is still not really where it needs to be in order for me to move to the next step and offer that really compelling, meaningful presentation. Yeah. Wow. I, I thank you because I think that that's a you know a really interesting. That's a realistic answer too. So, so thank you. So you mentioned the presentation, and again, we don't have a tremendous amount of time, but the presentation aspect, step five, we're already at step five and it, it's really a, an incredible thing the things that we've gone through to get to this piece and as jared reminded us this is not the ask part We're it's not, not asking. it's not the ask part and and similar to need discovery you may do multiple presentations okay before you know and we all know and and for folks that are new to the industry uh I'll, I'll I'll say this, trust your gut. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you'll have enough of these experiences where where just or and just life experience, right? Mm -hmm. But you may you may give two presentations, three presentations before your gut says, okay, now is the other factors too, but I I trust my gut a lot on some of these things. Mm -hmm. Where where you're saying, okay, all indicators are this is the right presentation to make the ask. Okay. Yeah or to get us to the next place to make the ask. Because we still have handling objections and that'll be a great conversation later on this week. <laughs> right, right. So in the presentation, when you talk about this, Tony, are you saying like, this is how we communicate? I mean, to your point, and Jarrett and I wouldn't be here without what has occurred with COVID. I mean, we had to change our presentation. So are you talking about you know, this is like at a restaurant, in an office, on Zoom, hand, letters. What, what is it that we're talking about? So I, I think it's it's all of those, okay. right? I wish it were so simple, right? I'm talking about a boardroom <laughs> and a PowerPoint, right? But it's not that simple. Sometimes you're going, you, sometimes you're going to want to take props. So if you're a, a nonprofit uh, who has, uh, you know, an arts program. Uh, where your your clients and community you serve are making art, you might want to take a piece of art that is made to, as part of your presentation. Uh, leave it as a gift, perhaps. I mean, uh, but that's what this part of the curriculum really talks about. It's talk, it talks about all of the ways to prepare for a presentation, all of the things to think about based on what we've learned about the donor in our approach and need discovery, right? In need discovery, I have learned that Jarrett loves Huskies. I don't know if you knew that, Jarrett, but you love Huskies. It's your favorite I dog. I do. <laughs> so when I am putting together that presentation, I may I may put a Husky with a little speak, speech bubble that says just whatever. You know what I mean? That might have yes. some statistic or something. Just yes. something that's going to personalize, personalize, yeah. the experience 
for the potential donor so that they know that you see them as an individual and not as a statistic or a KPI. Mm -hmm. That I, that's to me speaks volumes. Um, you know, I was doing a strategic planning retreat and I knew that the CEO had this like huge infatuation with dogs, in particular her dog, you know, but I did, I incorporated some dog photos in there, even though it was a totally different sector than animal welfare, sure. it just, there's these little ways you can customize and personalize it. Um, and I, I just love that so much. And, and I think there's so many ways, right. To, to just insert a few of those things like, Hey, I'm listening, I'm paying attention. I see you. Right. And I see what's, what's of interest to you. Mm -hmm. Cause yeah. again, this, this entire curriculum is built on the desire to improve one-on-one -on -one relationships with right. our donors. Mm -hmm. Right. And I love the props in particular, the art yeah. is really good. Oh yeah. I do a lot of work with human services. I could even sure. see like bringing in a grocery bag filled with oh. groceries to, you know, prove the example of this is how many, you know, groceries a family of four receives, or again, there's so many opportunities, I think. Yeah, there is. And, and, and get creative. Most folks in development roles are super creative people. Yes. So so really lean into, you know, yeah. your the creative part of 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 this work yeah, <laughs> and, and, and create these meaningful experiences. If, if during your presentation, that potential donor walks away feeling like they've not only had a meaningful conversation, but some kind of meaningful experience right. <laughs> in the time that they've spent with you. Right. Awesome. Good I stuff. love it too. Imagine if you are an animal welfare and you bring a puppy or you bring a little kitten, right? Like you bring something tangible. Oh my gosh. You know, puppies and babies, kryptonite in the fundraising. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. I love but, it. As, it, but as folks dive into the curriculum, it, it really is about, you know, how to plan for your presentation mm -hmm. and how to be able to show up as your authentic self as well mm -hmm. uh, in, in planning uh, for your presentation. And there's different presentation styles, right? Like there's an impromptu, there's the formal, as you talked about, like the boardroom with the power PowerPoint. And all of this I know uh, dives deeper on the portal, which thank you, Julia, uh, for pulling this up online.fundraising-academy.org. Tony mentioned this yesterday, again today, uh, the portal is free, check it out. You know, we are merely scratching the surface mm -hmm. here with these conversations. The portal dives deep and deep and deep. And there's no time um, that you cannot dive into this, into this cycle, right? I mean, yeah. we thought that maybe there was, right? Like maybe it's a seasonality to it, but Tony, my friend, you proved us wrong. Well, we're meeting potential investors for our organizations every day. All the time. Yeah. So, yeah. So we, we need to be ready to kind of, you know, again, on-ramp someone into, you know, the yeah. cross-selling cycle at any given moment of the year. Yes. I love it. Well, Tony Bell, Senior Director, National University Academies Relationship yeah. Center, an amazing, amazing leader in our sector in education, but more importantly, in the nonprofit space, because he has walked this journey um, of leadership and fundraising. And so he brings this amazing knowledge and process to us. And so we always love it when we can get you um, away from your busy schedule to help us. So again, uh, check out Tony's work and you can learn more about all the things that Fundraising Academy is doing at fundraising-academy.org. It is an amazing, amazing um, amount of work. It really, it, it truly is in knowledge. Hey everybody, Nonprofit Power Week is always a favorite for Jarrett and I because we get one week, five days where we get to really, really focus in on something with our guests. And so Nonprofit Power Week today brought by brought to us through um, the work, the hard work at Fundraising Academy at National University, Bloomerang, your part-time controller, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Nerd, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. These are the folks that join us day in and day out. Jarrett, what show number are we at? Somewhere close to 8.30? Oh, you no, know, we're past 8.30. Yeah. yeah. 
We are definitely past 8.30. And um, yeah. Well, thank you to all of these folks that are with us day in and day out. And especially, you know, um, I got to give a shout out to Fundraising Academy because they are truly one of the very first voices that we um, encountered and talked about. And then it was, it's, it was just amazing. So as we like to end every episode, we want to remind everybody to stay well so you can do well. We'll see you back here tomorrow for another exploration of Cause Selling with Fundraising Academy.